All right, guys, what's up? It's Jay Lee. I'm going to be uh, responding to some comments here um, that I think are pretty important, just considering um, what this guy's talking about, what he means, and a lot of men share this same concepts and ideologies um, about what a man should be. Um, I think this is an interesting uh Com these are interesting comments, you know, just based on that, because a lot of men believe this. A lot of men really believe this. So I'm going to break this down. I'm going to break down his thoughts, and I'm going to kind of respond and break down where I'm coming from. All right, let's get into it. So this guy says, da -da -da, at the same time, we stopped doing what we were meant to be doing and started focusing on having a happy life. Men have never needed love to thrive. We're literally scared of it. When it comes to us, we needed to be the workhorse. We aren't meant to have been uh said someone tags into our life tags in onto our life i think what he what he meant by that statement is we're supposed to be workers and then once we're workers worker bees or whatever the the woman she just appears i think is the, is the concept that he's trying to say which a lot of people believe and which i believed when i was blue pilled um that once you you know when i was younger once i get the career that i can get the woman kind of thing and once I became red pilled, that concept just totally flipped for me, and I was like, "Wow, I've I was totally being used," and that whole idea ideology uh, was just turning me into a tool. Uh, but I'm gonna I'm gonna continue to break that down. Let's let's continue to read this. So he says. Um, uh, these women out here are acting crazy because we started moving responsibility. I've seen both sides. Who started uh, moving responsibility? Not not men. Women did. Feminism came in and said, "Oh, you can do everything a man can do. Go work," which, if you think about it, is such a silly uh, grift. It's such a silly lie because, uh, <laughs> you know, who wants to? You know, oh, you know, they 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 made a career sound so amazing, but a career is just it's full of stress. It's full of all these issues, and many women statistically. Are very unhappy as career women. That's a that's a that's a fact. That's you know that they, they studied it. So that's silly. Uh, these women out here are acting crazy because we started moving responsibility. I've seen both sides of the field where I've done everything asked of me, and then been the man giving the orders. And I can tell you which one brings the happier relationship, and is putting your foot down and handling everything she's not meant to be doing. Boy, this guy just sounds like he's really lost in the sauce. This, this sounds like he's kind of a cuck here. So, so, and I think a lot of the mentality here, a lot of men, it makes them have self-esteem and it makes them feel big and good when they're, when they're, when they're the ones who are kind of running, uh, how do I put it? When they're the ones who are, so it's, so let me put it this way. It's convenient for a woman to be like, Oh, I got my man. He pays all the bills. He takes care of me. He takes care of everything. There's a lot of women out there like that who just want to be pampered to and taken care of. And there's men out there who think that fulfilling that role makes them more masculine. And they don't realize that they're just being used. They don't realize that they're just a tool, if that makes sense. You're a means to an end. You are utility. It's like... There's men out there who think, oh, because I make all this money and I'm buying things for these women that somehow that gives me high value and they don't realize they're just being viewed as an ATM, right? As a credit card or a debit card, whatever. If you don't have that money, they won't treat you the same. If you don't have that, uh, you know, if you don't provide them with the lifestyle they want, then all of a sudden you're not shit to them. So how is that really masculine? How is that really serving you? How is that how is that really uh, serving you is not even the right term. How is that giving you uh real value? You you know, how are you really being valued if you take away your providership or your money what it, you know whatever? You all of a sudden you're not popular with the women anymore. All of a sudden you're not that same woman doesn't love you anymore. All of a sudden, it's not the same thing. And this is why why a lot of men experience that once they lose their jobs or once they lose their career, something happens, and 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 
you can't provide for her as well or the or the lifestyle changes and then all of a sudden she loses attraction for you what does that mean it means that you are a tool you're being used right but what's twisted about it is that again there's a lot of men who think that that's being masculine like oh i'm providing everything i'm going out and paying for everything and this is part of my red pill journey was like realizing like, wait, what am I doing? Why would I go out on dates? Why, or excuse me, why would I take a woman on a date and pay for everything when she's just using me? She's not also, you know, and, and this is why there's, you know, you, you see these memes and you read these stories about women who literally just go on free dates and get free food and they use it as like a, 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 a source of food. Like they just use men to, to take them on dates and they, and they just get food that way. Like, like that's their dinner for the week. They don't have to worry about paying and they get these elaborate restaurant, you know, uh, dishes and, and, and they're just eating these, this elaborate restaurant food. And it's like, she's using you, you know what I mean? And so he even uses this, uh, I'll, yeah, let me just go on. But he, he, he calls it a workhorse and, and which is something that I've, it's a neg he uses it a positive term, something that I've, uh, always use in a negative term but but we'll continue here um let's see da, da, da. uh i've seen both sides of the field where i've been where i've had everything asked of me and then the man and i could tell you which oh i've done everything asked of me and then been the man giving the orders are you sure i don't know that's a little weird but even then it's like I don't, I don't subscribe to that either. I'm not one of these people who's like, oh, I need to give orders in the relationship. Like, I hate that. That's weird. I, I don't want to be a dictator in a relationship. And I don't want to like, I don't want authority. I don't, I, I don't understand people who do. It's weird to me. I don't relish having power over anyone. I don't like that. The only thing I like is... I guess it's a form of egalitarianism, if that's correct, um, is let's do the right thing because it's the right thing to do, right? Let's go in the right direction because it's a, it's the right way to go. But I think humans are so caught up because it, it – and, and honestly, I think it's all a distortion. Humans are so caught up in authority like, oh, my boss says I got to do this or the leader at work says this. And it's just like it's weird to me. It's like it's like checkers. It's like it's such a simple game. Like, no, I don't want to be told what to do. How about we all just do the right thing? And, and, and yes, I understand. There are a lot of people out there who are NPCs. There's another term called the 85 85ers, 85% of people who are, they don't want to be leaders, they just want to be led, right? Um, I think there's some truth to that. I think there's there's a lot of people who don't like responsibility and they just want somebody to tell them what to do. But I don't like that. I don't like being around those people. I don't like that concept. It's weird to me. Um, again, and, and I've heard this argument a lot, like, oh, I need women to be submissive to me. Uh, I can't be in a relationship with a woman who's not submissive to me. I don't, to me, that's just ego. Like, I don't understand, like, how about you work together? I like that. I like working together. And it's not like, oh, equality, you know, yay, rah, rah, rah. No, it's like, we're all, I, I like the concept of a team, right? A team, you know, for instance, basketball, right? Yes, everybody has the potential to score individually, but it's not about, any one person necessarily per se. Now I know there's a lot of people like Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, they were ball hogs, Allen Iverson, ball hog. Yes, that's true. And a lot of times to their own detriment, a lot of times they lost championships because of that, or I don't know championships, but they lost, they lost out on in the playoffs or whatever, because being a ball hog is not necessarily the best move. And I will say one thing about today's NBA is there seems to be a lot more teamwork in a sense, is that everybody is amazing. Everybody can score. It's just about finding the right person who's on the right p place on the court to make a successful shot. Whereas it kind of was a lot more individualistic back in the day. You, you know, people, you know, we need these stars, and it still is kind of like that. But it's a little more teamy today, a, a teamworky today, and that's why I love teams like the '89, I think '89, '90, or '88, '89 Detroit Pistons. Who won? I think back-to-back -back championships, and then like the 2012 Dallas Mavericks. I think it was. I think it was 2012 or 13 when they beat the Miami Heat. 
those are my favorite. And then I think the 2004, also the 2004 Detroit Pistons. Those are teams that I like because they they beat great players, individual players, and they did it as a teamwork. I like that. You know, I like the concept of teamwork in a relationship. We both do what needs to be done. Hey, if you want to do these things and I'll do these things, that's fine. Or I could do these things and you could do those things. I don't care who does what and I don't care how I, I, it doesn't matter to me who is t giving orders. It's just about what's getting done. You know, let's let's work together and get this done. You could call me new age. I don't know, but I don't. I'm not one of these guys who's out here trying to rule over a woman. I don't like that. I don't know. I don't really. I mean, I guess I understand it, but it just doesn't. It's not appealing to me. I don't like being over anybody. I don't want to be over anybody. I just want everybody to eat. I want everybody to enjoy. I want every. I want things that need to be done to be done, and however that works. You know, I'm not over here trying to give orders. It's just weird to me. I don't like it. It's an ego thing. And and it's and it, you could call it old school. It is old school. I think the old school wanted the man to be the leader and, and the dictator and he, what, what he says goes, etc. It's just don't like it. Don't like it. Uh, but a lot of but but it's just it's a reality that a lot of men feel that way. Um but I could, but I'm going to tell you why it's not good anymore. I'm going to tell you why it doesn't really work necessarily. I'm going to get into it, but let's let's keep going. Uh, I could tell you which one brings the happier relationship, and it's putting your foot down, and handling everything she's not meant to be doing. Again, maybe it's happier. Maybe it's a happier relationship, or maybe she's just happy that she doesn't have to do anything. That that you're taking on all the responsibility, or or and I also think that there's some women who have a kink. There's some women who have like a um, uh, authority kink. They want to be they want to be told what to do because it just turns them on. I, I honestly think that. And there's and there's and also I you know you have to get into this as well. There's a lot of trad women who are actually they just have a kink uh, uh, of being taken care of. A lot of women become trad women because they just have this weird kink where they want to be taken care of by a man. And and you could argue that that's female nature, but. Not necessarily you, in in the context of a trad woman, because a trad woman is supposed to have wholesome moral values. A lot of these women don't have the wholesome moral values. They just want to be taken care of, and then they slap a label on themselves of being trad. That's not what a trad woman is, just because you want to be taken care of. That just means you, you're just lazy, you just don't want to work, or you don't want to put in the effort, or in, in, in whatever context, and you want the man to do everything. There's a lot of women out there who are riding that trad you know trad woman bandwagon because they just want they want free shit they, they want a guy who makes a lot of money in 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 the relationship and who has you know a nice house and then they they just get to oh i want to be a homemaker because it's kind of a kink it's not because that's how they really are per se it's not because they have these moral christian values and oh the bible tells me i need to stay at home da, da. it's not because of that it's because they just want to they want to be lazy in a, in a sense okay um we generationally we've dropped our responsibilities and started believing some of our things uh some of our side of things is their job i don't like this delegation of whose job is what now yes there's you wouldn't want a woman to try to change an engine on a car if that's not how she's geared yes there's some things seem to be more geared towards men, uh, men males because males are physically stronger that makes sense but again i look at it as more of a, a pragmatic scenario if there's a scenario that a, where a woman could do the job just as well i don't care if there's a if there's a scenario where like okay the guy has to do it because he's more physically strong that makes sense where the man would do it but like all these like oh this is a man's job this is what a man's supposed to do like i hate that shit and that's what messes a lot of people up it hurts a lot of people because what if you can't do it or what if this doesn't work or what if you're not as masculine or what if you're not as this or that or, or whatever what if it just doesn't work and then all of a sudden you're a, you think you're a failure because you can't live up to some crap and that's why the old shit died that's why old cultures at least the strictness of the old uh, of the old ways that that died off because again not everybody can what if it just doesn't work? What if it's, you know, it's, this is the reason why a lot of the times tradition does die. It, it, but 
you have to put it in context. What is why do men yearn after traditional roles? Because there was just a lot more peace. And so I think it's not necessarily the roles that men are really to some extent it is, but a lot of it is just the culture and the culture be, really was was what it was was because it was a more of a moral culture it was more of a there it was a lot more to it than just oh i have my masculine role you have your feminine role no there was a lot more to it in the sense that we live in a different time now the reason why women aren't trad women anymore is because by the time they're 24 23 you know even by the time they graduate college 22 their body count is easily in the double digits, maybe triple digits. That's why we're no longer in the trap because people aren't moral anymore. You have to have that moral foundation. Otherwise, it's really not traditional. It's not traditional if you don't have the morals because that's what that's what the traditions what, uh, were back then. Anyway, um, pick up the full load and watch your independent woman turn into the submissive self she fought against. I'm not saying that's not true pick up the full load and watch your independent woman turn. I think that that can be true because I think there is something within female nature that wants to submit to a man. And the problem is, is that they have such high standards that you got to be Superman. And this is where women, this is where men just get screwed and, and get thrown under the bus because a lot of men just, well, they can't necessarily live up to all that crap. And we live in a different time. We don't live in a time in the 1950s, which was an idyllic time, where you could just go, you didn't need a college degree to get a great job and get a great house, a two-car garage, and, and two cars, you know, a, a work car and a, and, a, and a leisure car. You could do that in the 1950s, and you didn't need a degree. Nowadays, you, you, you could have two, three degrees, and you still don't qualify for a great, for a great career. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's obviously it's better to have a degree than not nowadays, but you need to have a degree now to even compare. I mean, we just live in it financially. We live it not only financially, but culturally, morally, we do not live in those times anymore, unfortunately. Now that isn't to say this wouldn't work today, but it's different. The reason why it's different is because, um, well, first of all, he says, pick up the, f the, the full load. So this is where men, and he even uses uh, the term workhorse in, in his next comment, but this is where men get get used. This is where men become a tool, pick up the full load. And this is where women are like, oh, I want a, I want a real man who's, you know, doing everything. Well, really, she wants a butler. <laughs> That's what she really wants. She wants, she doesn't want a lover. She doesn't want a, 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 a man to be her to be her love, to be intimate with. She wants a, a, a she wants a means to an end. She wants a utility. She wants a butler. And you you hear this from women a lot. Oh, I want a man who will come home and and, and do the dishes or come home, who 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 actually cleans and does things and do, and and you realize like oh, men are just utility. Men are just like, you know, they view us as like robots in a way. I don't know if I'm 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 articulating that well enough but let okay so i said bro i ain't no workhorse where does he mention workhorse in here uh at the same time men have new thrive oh there we go we needed to be the workhorse we are meant to have been and someone tags into our life yeah i mean like and so i say bro i ain't no workhorse fuck out of here with that yeah that's me uh workhorse for some hypergamous woman so i can give her the lifestyle she wants but if I didn't have it, she wouldn't want me. Hell no. Yeah, and 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 I had a great. I knew a guy, you know, some years back, who had this great analogy, and he would say it sometimes. And he says, uh, "Women want man to be their workhorse, meaning she rides. She, he's a horse. She saddles him up, and she's in a chair. I don't know if you use the word chariot or what. You know, whatever wagon behind him or whatever. She 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 saddles him up, ties." ties the reins to him and he does all the work and she and he carts her around and she's getting all the benefits what is that wow and that's that that's a great analogy and that's what he used to say and, and if you really understand i don't know if i'm articulating it correctly but um i don't want to be a workhorse to fulfill a woman's hypergamy that's not what i want i don't 
like that. It's not love to me. It's not real to me. Because again, if you stop doing that, well, it's like, how do I put it? It's like saying something like, oh, I, I love this woman because she does this thing. And then if you, if you didn't do this thing, then you wouldn't love her. And it's like, well, that's not real love. You know, you just you just want a butler. You want a guy who's going to do things for you. And if it's it's weird. It cheapens it. It's like it's it, it's kind of like, you know, being a celebrity. Like most people like celebrities because, oh, I saw you on the TV and you have this talent. And I saw you in these movies or I saw you on, you know, on stage or whatever. And you have this great talent and they love you for that. But they don't really know the real you. They don't love you for who you really are because they'll never know the real you. All they know is you with the talent. They know you who has the talent, right? And that's so. And I think a lot of celebrities feel that way. They're like, yeah, these fans are so phony. They don't even know who I really am. They just love me for for my music or whatever. And and a lot of celebrities are like, yeah, that's great. You know, they they love me for my movies or they love me for my music. And they like that because it's your, it's their talent and they like they recognize the talent. But some of them, and I like I like the ones who I like this. But some of them are like, yeah, you don't really know me, and so how could you say you love me? It's somebody, who, if somebody who really loves you, they're there for you for your ups and downs. They're there for you when you're at your worst moments. There, and, and a lot of people are like, oh, I don't like this celebrity anymore because he got addicted to drugs and alcohol, or I don't like this celebrity anymore because he's no longer on my political side of the spectrum or he said this and I didn't like it and I didn't agree with it. So I don't really like that guy anymore. And you realize a fan's love is shallow. That type of love is shallow. It's a conditional love, right? So that's the problem with being a workhorse is you're just fulfilling her hypergamy. You're just fulfilling her means to you. You're, you're, you're being her means to an end. And this is why I say so many relationships, so many marriages today are, are, are purely, I say purely, but but foundationally uh, transactional. Yes, you might love that person, but again, he, he or she is fulfilling. Probably he is fulfilling some transaction. You, you know, again, this is why women leave men when they when they lose their careers because it's a transactional relationship. It's a conditional love. If he stops being this workhorse, if he stops bringing in the bread, if he stops doing these things that I want to fulfill my hypergamy and fulfill the lifestyle that I want and fulfill the amount of money that I think I, I should have and I no longer love him. That's not real love. Real love is, dude, I'm with you if we're homeless. I'm with you through thick and thin. I'm with you if you're struggling. I'm with you if you stop doing anything. I'm still with you because I freaking love you and I got no I got no choice because I, I, I'm i yours and you're mine and, and, I, and I ain't going nowhere no matter what. That's freaking real love. But this is why so many divorces happen because, oh, he, uh, I, you know, I just wasn't attracted to him as I, as I used to be. He's just not the same person that I married anymore and da, da, da. This is the problem that people are doing is they're putting all these conditions on their love well yes i love you but there's this there's this fine print there's this clause well if you don't do this and this and this then i no longer love you and that's not real love you know that if you i I, it's it's a great example but most people don't use it i I don't know most people but a lot of people don't use it anymore but the the wedding vows is is a great example uh i choose to be with this person richer or poorer through sickness and in health, right? No matter what happens, I'm with you. That's that's a great vow, but they people change it. They 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 make up their own vows, and it's all about them. And they're so they're selfish vows. Oh, I met you, and you made me feel so wonderful, and now I love you so much. And pay attention to that. Pay pay. I don't know if you. I don't know how you, how you would do it if you're. The reason why I I, I got into it is because I I'm into photography and videography, and uh, there's a lot of wedding videos and you listen to some of their vows you know in these wedding videos and things and it's like it's so selfish their vows are so selfish oh i love you because you made me feel this way and you took me here and it was such an amazing experience and we did this and you made me just feel it's all about me 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 how you make me feel how you you know but but no like it used to be i love you through thick and thin whether you're sick or or healthy whether you're poor or rich, whether you're 
whatever i'm with you and, and that's my vow and this is freaking eternal this is eternal like i'm with you for the rest of my life and i'm making this vow right now in this marriage and this is why marriages used to work because people used to work at things and, and it was it was something deeper and they understood that hey you know it's not about roles not about who does what it's not about um how he makes me feel or the lifestyle or any of this crap because all that can go away all that can change and that's why we have divorce that's why we our divorce is so high today but it's not about any of that it's about you i choose to be with you through thick and thin and we're going to work it out together and we're going to make it together come hell or high water no matter what happens i am freaking with you and that's what the vows used to be about right so this is why being a workhorse is not the move for men because again your value and and, and, a, and I think a, I think a lot of it is low self esteem. I think a lot of the reason why men like this stuff and and they subscribe to it and they buy into it is because they have low self esteem, uh, and 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 they make themselves feel good like oh I'm 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 uh, validated as a man I'm justified as a man because you know I'm providing this thing I'm providing you know this value by doing all this and and it's just like. I don't care. I, I, I'm, you know, like I, I don't, I don't care about. That doesn't give me self esteem. I have self esteem because I know who I am, and I, and I have self esteem. Period. Regardless. Um, but I'm not out here trying to earn people's respect through providing or doing this or doing that. So then, so then I can have self esteem. I mean, that's where you, I feel like that's a recipe for unhappiness, honestly, because what if you don't impress somebody or what if they raise the bar on you? What if, uh, they're always raising the bar on you, you know? So you're really just setting yourself up to be a tool. You're setting yourself up to be used and I think a lot of modern relationships, modern women are just using men, you know, and this is why they cheat on their man because he's, he's really just their butler. It, and I don't know if respect is the right word. They respect you in the sense that you respect somebody who's working on your car, right? Well, I respect this guy working on my car because he's going to fix what I need. And it's the same way for, like, oh, I respect my husband because he's giving me what I need, which is food on the table or sustenance. Or, but, but, but what if you take that away? What if he doesn't do that any longer? Well, you don't respect him anymore. So that means you don't really love him. Some people say, oh, respect is love. I disagree. I don't think respect is love because respect can come and go. You can lose respect for somebody and still love them. Right. If somebody does you really dirty, somebody in your family is a family member, or whatever, whatever, screws you over, which which tends to happen uh, from time to time. People get screwed over by their family members. It's not uncommon. You lose respect for that person, maybe. Right. You even might have beef with that person. You might not even want to see that person. But it doesn't mean you don't love that person because that person is in your family. You still love that person. Right. And so I think that's that's a good way to put it is that love is something that doesn't change with circumstance, right? And so this is where I think, and, and a lot of men might think like, oh, that's just, that's fruity, or that's that's feminine, or, you know, that's some kind of, you know, oh, you know, what are you, some kind of poet or something, some kind of idealist. No, I think that's realism. I think if you are going into a relationship, it should be based on love. That's what you should want out of it is love. And if, you, if her love is going to come and go, with with the rise and tides of circumstances because circumstances in life tend to rise and fall they t they tend to be variable right things happen you could lose your job you could get sick whatever whatever you know then it's not real love and she'll and she'll leave you all right well let's go on he continues and he says that's your job though bro facing the world so your family doesn't have have to right then and there if she's see this is i this is where like men get caught up in this these idealistic roles we're like oh i'm i'm the protector and i'm the provider and this is my job and i'm gonna i gotta be selfless and i gotta be uh, and, and then i get all the honor and respect for my family and it's just like oh i don't like all that it's weird um why would you want your family not to face the world they should face the world too because they're they're you want them to be adults right you want them to right so it's like you're gonna take on all and, and i think this is where like people get 
weird it, it, it is like oh well dad did everything so i don't have to do everything and then, and then you kind of ruin their character you ruin your children's character that way in a way it's like no they need to face the world too and so does my wife she's not going to get out of responsibility just because i'm the workhorse quote unquote or whatever it's weird and and not only that you're putting yourself in a position of uh how do i put it you're you're um if you fail right then you're the one who's supposed to do everything then all of a sudden you're just you're nothing it's right so it's like you you're you're setting yourself up for for more pain i think i don't think i articulated that quite correctly but uh all right let's go on if she's still like that after the fact of you doing what you're meant to be doing then she wasn't the right one yeah i mean that's it's neither here nor there if she, she's not the right one if she doesn't love you she's not the right one if she doesn't want to be with you regardless of what you do a woman who loves you when you're at your lowest that's the right one a woman who loves you when you're not doing anything for her you're not benefiting her in any way that's the right one she just loves you you want a woman who's gonna love you for you regardless of, of what the hell you do and so this is where like this masculinity uh you know i'm an alpha male kind of crap this is where men just just get lost in the sauce i think I don't like it. I don't like it. Uh, nothing would have got her where she needed to be. She was too far gone. All I'm saying is I've been a piece of shit most of my life. And the minute I started acting right, girls started trusting me to lead. If she doesn't trust you to lead her, she's not going to submit like that. I don't care if she submits or not. I'm not interested in leading a woman for her and her, for her to submit. I don't like it. I, it's not appealing to me. Um... It doesn't mean that I want a woman that, that I'm trying to, you know, it, 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 it doesn't mean that I don't care what a woman does. It doesn't mean that I don't want her to succeed with me or, 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 or want to succeed or want things to be good. That's where I think you just got to work at it, right? You both have to work at love you both have to work at a relationship in the sense that if you really love this person if you really are attracted to this person you want to be with this person then there's gonna you it's there's gonna be some effort in the sense that you've got to keep that love burning you've got to keep that relationship intact and that requires a bit of work meaning i've got to open my heart and, and care about this person and do things to show my love and and, and work on our relationship and make sure that our relationship is uh, going smoothly and, and I do that by you know telling him or her nice things or telling her that I love her or, or giving her a gift or, or taking you know going out and enjoying something and, 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 and that's where time comes in right and, and, and but that's good because you want to spend time and you want to work at your relationship that way because you love that person it makes total sense but to me, what doesn't make sense is that, oh, she's got to trust me and I've got to lead her and she's got to submit and all this crap. And it's just like, I'm not interested in a woman in telling a woman what to do. I'm not interested in, in I'm not interested in a woman submitting to me per se. How about you find a woman who's an adult and can make responsible decisions for herself and is intelligent enough to where you don't have to tell her what to do? That's appealing to me. Where I'm like, yeah, I don't have to be your boss at home. I don't have to dictate to you what you should do and you need to submit to me. It's just weird. I've never, I get, and even the, I think the Bible says that even, and it's just, it's always been weird to me. I just, I'm not interested in that. How about you just do what's right? How about you, how about we both just work on doing what's right? You, you do your things, I'll do my things, or we do, you know, we can switch off things and anyway. Uh, so I say, my job is whatever I want it to be. You sound like you love the Matrix, but yet, but you've yet to learn the Matrix doesn't give a fuck about men. If you want to turn yourself into a tool, that's on you, but that ain't me. Becoming a utility isn't masculine. You sound brainwashed. And again, this is where people get so lost into the sauce. They buy into that. I need to be an alpha male. I need to be the leader. Woo, woo, woo. And they don't realize that they're setting themselves. That's part of the matrix. You are setting yourself up to be a tool. You are just playing into what the matrix wants you to be. Oh, I got to go be an earner. I got to make the money. And then I get the girl. And, and, and that's blue-pilled. That's absolutely blue-pilled. 
oh, I got to do, you know, jump through these hoops and then I get the reward. You're a little dog. You're a little doggy. You jump through the hoops and then you get the doggy treat, right? And, and this is what women are doing. Like, oh, well, you can't have me unless you make this amount of money. There, That's the rule. That That's the hoops they want you to jump through. Oh, these are the hoops. And then I'll give you the sex. And then I'll give you the intimacy. And then I'll give you my love. But if you don't jump through these hoops, then I don't love you. And, 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 and you're not shit to me. And, and then you realize... If you're smart, you realize, well, that's not real love. If you're smart, you realize, wait a minute, that's that's matrix programming. I am being programmed by these so, quote-unquote social norms that if I don't fulfill, then I don't get the benefit. And yet you slap a label on that of love. And it's just like, look, I understand that if women aren't working, I understand that, you know, we all need to have money to survive. I get all that. That makes sense. But these roles where like again, if 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 you're if you're not doing these things, then you ain't shit. You realize that that's not something that's not something that serves you as a man. And not only that, I think a lot of women, the reason why a lot of women take advantage of men like that is cuz it's not really love. And I think women deep down are like they don't want to be in those roles either. And I'm not excusing women taking advantage of men, but the point is is like we we know in the red pill that that women are taking advantage of marriage, whether it's through divorce or whether it's through cheating behind the back or whatever. We know these things are happening, right? But have we ever considered that a lot of the reason why these things are happening is because women themselves are kind of lost women themselves are kind of like what is this you know and and i think that you have a lot much better chance of a relationship or a marriage or whatever working if it's if the foundation of the relationship is love right if it's love then it's probably going to work <laughs> because that's that's what people really want if you really love somebody you're going to make it work if it's all about these roles if it's all about oh you know you've got these You've got these uh, social norms, or you've got these hoops you got to jump through. Then that's what the relationship's going to be about, and then really the relationship is is um, is shallow, and it's and, and it's a matrix relationship, you know. Because again, if you're not if you're not the worker bee, if if you get injured or you're you're no longer able to to be the man you were, then she'll leave you for for another man who who will fulfill her hypergamy. Right. So how's that real love? So you're setting yourself up by doing this because then you're going to find a woman who's going to utilize you as a workhorse. She's going to say, oh, here's a guy who wants to be a workhorse. Here's a guy who wants to fulfill my heart program. Here's a guy who wants to bend over backwards to make me happy. That benefits me. That's beneficial to me. Right. Here's a guy who's going to do all jump through all these hoops, make the money and then, and then it all goes to me. I get the benefits and all I got to do is show up. Is that a good deal for a man? I don't think so. I don't think that's a good deal for a man. But anyways, guys, I'm going to leave it there. appreciate you listening. Sometimes I just got to talk about these examples and um, and really kind of break down what it really means. And I think there's a lot of men who are lost in this, in, in this, uh, you know, in, in that, in that type of matrix, in that type of, condi- you know, social conditioning or brainwashing. I call it brainwashing. Like I said, you sound brainwashed here. It's, it's brainwashing. It's like, oh, I got to be the man and do all these things. Blah, 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 and they don't stop to think, well, hey, am I being taken advantage? Am I being taken advantage of? You know, is this is this really beneficial for me? Is this really, uh, or am I just kind of a means to an end? If you're a means to an end, then it makes sense if she divorces you. It makes sense if she loses her love for you because it's like, yes, you fulfilled that purpose of her hypergamy to where she can have babies or whatever this nature thing that women have that, that, that they want a man who's doing all these things or whatever, whatever. You're fulfilling those things, but this is why people divorce because once you once you're once that's over with, once the kids are gone, or once she feels safe enough on her own or whatever. She doesn't need you anymore or, she, or, or, or you can't fulfill those things. Then she's gone. And divorce is at 50%. So the, the, the statistics don't lie. Finances are a top three reason for divorce. So something's wrong, right? Something's wrong in that equation. And this is why I say, again, base it on love. And you could say that that's feminine or that's a fairy tale or whatever, whatever. But I disagree. I think the reason why marriages used to work is because they were founded on love. And that's why your great-grandparents stayed together through the Great Depression. That's why they stayed together when all they could afford is is is, is two potatoes a day or whatever the hell. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm being – I'm exaggerating. But – not not a whole lot cuz you know they would they would survive through through poverty together and they would stay together and they would be in love and they would 
you know, it's why you have your great grandparents are 85 and they're still together and they've been together for 50, 60 years since, you know, since they were 1920, right? That's why those things happen because it was, it was about the other person. It was about love. And now it's just about what you can do for the other person. And this is where men get screwed by, oh, I got to fulfill these roles. Woo, woo. And you're, beca- you're making yourself a tool. But anyways, guys, I'm going to end it there. Appreciate you listening. It's been Jay Lee, Northwest Podcast. Peace.